Well, hello and good evening, everybody. I am so glad that you are here with me on this, our second live class for re uh, renewing the six faculties of the mind. Now, I'm just letting you guys know if I sound a little flaky, uh, if I sound a little weird today, it's because I have been contending against a sinus infection for the past 10 days or so. It started last week about the first session. So that lets me know that I am doing something right. And uh, so I'm just letting you guys know that um, I'm, I've been contending against it. So I do have a little congestion. And um, But the devil is alive. We're going to keep pressing through. We're going to keep moving forward. And God is my helper. He's going to help me get through this. We're going to overcome. Because Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I was healed at the cross of Calvary. So I know that when the enemy, I mean, I'm telling you, this thing really started, the, the, uh, it started right, right, like a day or two before the first program. And, um, but I just claim and I stand on the word of God for my full manifested healing. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I live and walk in divine health and I just praise God. But in the meanwhile, that cold medication, which I don't usually take a lot of, it makes me a little groggy sometimes. So we're going to go ahead because I have a word for tonight. I'm telling you, I am healed. That's right, Toya. I am healed in Jesus' name. I am so so excited about what God has been really breaking uh, breaking and opening up into opening up to me and sharing with me. So tonight's session in Lesson 2 in renewing the six faculties of the mind. Tonight we're going to be focusing on the faculty of the imagination. We're going to be focusing on the faculty of the imagination. Now let's just start out. Uh, I, I think, oh wow, great. Praise God. Eight of you guys are on here tonight. Welcome Keisha. Welcome Renell. Welcome Stephanie. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello, Joy. Welcome. We're I'm so glad that you guys are on with me tonight. So let's just start out with a word of prayer. So Heavenly Father, we thank you that by faith the worlds were framed by the word of God. And we decree that as we learn tonight to activate the power of the imagination, not just thinking and bringing and casting it down, but Lord, how to use the imagination to create the things that you predestined, that you empower, that you saw, that you envisioned. God, you envisioned certain things being manifested through us. And it is through our imagination that we are able to synchronize with the mind of God. In addition, our own human imagination has the power to create things outside of the mind of God and then partner with the power of God to create whole new things that don't even exist that even God himself didn't think of. And that's the power of your imagination. So I just praise you, Father, what we're going to we're going to share tonight. I thank you that it will be a word to activate your glory, your power in the lives of these women. We thank you, Lord, that as women operating under the Kyle anointing, we are not just here to hear another word, to just get another word, to be a part of another group, but we decree in Jesus' name that we are here that we are going to take this word, we're going to do something with it, we're going to create something with it, we're going to manifest something with it, and we're going to change our corner of this universe, of this world, in this life, in preparation for what God is going to accomplish through us in the next realm. Because what we are doing in this realm is preparation, training, and, and equipment, equipping for the next realm. So I just praise God. So we thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. I'm, t I'm so excited. So let's recap for a little bit. So last week we did our introduction. We started out talking about that we are spirit beings, that we have a spirit, that our spirit possesses a soul, that soul lives inside a physical body. We said that the soul of man has three components. It is mind, it is will, it is emotion. The mind is what we think, the will is what we do, and the emotions is what we feel. 
And we said, depending on the level of maturity of an individual, then that person actually has the level, they will, they will have a bent towards either accessing the mind or being led by the emotions. They'll be led by the mind or they'll be led by the emotions, depending on the level of development of the spirit man and of the soulish man. So that if the soul is immature and undeveloped, we'll be moved by our emotions. And we'll be, that's why the word of God says that we can be cast to and fro with every, you know, so, so one of the important things is that the greater the development of the soul, the more the soul is activated in its development on the mental realm where you begin to connect with the mind of Christ. If this, let this mind also be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. So we said that the soul had those three parts. The mind thinks, the will acts, the emotions feel. And we said that those three parts give us the capacity to understand situations, to anticipate consequences, and to make decisions. Those are the three elements of wisdom. We went from there, so we're reviewing, so those of you who are just coming on, I'm giving everybody a chance to come on. We, we went from there and we started talking about in order for us to tap into wisdom and to use the wisdom that was really broken down in the book of Proverbs, not just in Proverbs 31, but throughout the whole categories of Proverbs, we see examples of how to apply wisdom so that we can get access to a level of understanding and thinking that enables us to do. Now, the whole purpose of the book of Proverbs is to activate your spirit mind and your soul mind to bring them into synchronization so that you can begin to function by the spirit through wisdom and able to do and anticipate what's going on, how to look at a circumstance and by the spirit of God in you know what to do, by the wisdom of God in you know what to do and not how to be shaped and molded by the circumstances that happen in front of us, okay? Then we started talking about, we defined the six faculties of the mind. We said that those faculties started out with the imagination. We said that it was intuition. We said that it was reason. We said that it was perception. We said that it was our will. We said that it was our um, let's see, memory, imagination, intuition, reason, perception, and will. Those are the six faculties. So each of these faculties are essential for the development of our spirit man. They are essential for the development of our soul. Now, what, what, what is significant about these faculties and the, fa the faculties of the mind is they sit between the body and the spirit. You can have a well-developed spirit, but an underdeveloped soul, which will limit what we're able to do in our body. Let me say that again. A person can have a well-developed spirit, but an underdeveloped soul, and therefore they will be limited by what they are able to accomplish in the body. Now, what is a well-developed spirit? The Word of God in the book of Jude, it talks about praying in the Holy Ghost so that we can build yourself up in your most holy faith. Now, I'm sure every one of us on this call, Lolita, especially you, Lolita, I know you can identify this. You, have, Everyone on this, on this line has known people in the kingdom. I mean, they can pray down heaven. You can sense their spiritual power. But when you look at their lives, their lives are broken up. When you look at their level of maturity in terms of being able to activate movement in the natural through things like self-discipline, through things like focus, through things like uh, establishing a vision, setting up a plan, taking the vision, the plan, and bringing it to bring it, uh, aligning a set of steps and actions so that you can manifest something. You have great people, wonderful leaders, but when it comes to using something strategically to manifest what they have been, what they have, been, what, what they can talk a good talk, and they can pray a good prayer, and they can move heaven. But the soulish realm is underdeveloped. And so as a result, because the soul, because those six faculties have never been cultivated, they've never been developed, they've never been, there's never been a focused effort on bringing them into alignment, under bringing them into a place of spiritual discipline, there were things that they just weren't able to accomplish. Now, how do I know this? Number one, I know this by experience. 
There have been seasons of my life when I knew that God was giving me an assignment. I knew that God was giving me a task. But because of areas of my own personal de development, my own soul, that just wasn't ready for it, I couldn't tap into it. I couldn't move into it. And it wasn't that God didn't want. It wasn't that it wasn't time. It, the timing was right. The hand of God was on me. But I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to step into it. Now, I may be the only one on here like that, but that's all right. I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil. I know, but most of us, in fact, that's a part of the human experience. There are many opportunities that come to us that the spirit man is ready and the body could actually manage. But because the soul is underdeveloped, we're not ready. We're not able to tap and to step into it. And so in order to do that, we have to cultivate and develop the soul. Now, the first, what, the first faculty of the mind, which is a part of the soul, that we're going to talk about and tap into tonight is the imagination. In 1 Chronicles 29, verse 18, it says, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imaginations of the thoughts of the hearts of thy people and prepare their hearts unto thee. Now there is a lot in that passage. That is so much. So let's first define what is the imagination and what was God telling or what was that, that prayer? What was God telling the children of Israel to keep in the imagination? Now, our imagination is the mental faculties that allows us to construct an image and then it takes that image and then our imagination can build a frame around it. In other words, our imagination can visualize a body and then in, in that, that body can be almost like uh, I was actually working on an app on my computer uh, on my computer the other day and it was a new app. It's actually a new version of Paint. And it, it, one of the things that you can do is you can pull up a 3D form. You can pull up a 3D image of a lady, of a man, of a dog, of a cat. And it's just a gray form. But what it allows you to do is to take through the Paint app, it allows you to, you can put clothes on it, you can put hair on it, you can get, get, get blind eyes, get eyes, a nose, a shape, a face. And you can literally create what this entity, this gray this gray three-dimensional woman or man or dog or cat, you, you get just a gray three-dimensional object and your imagination gets to divine what color the clothes are, what color the hair is going to be, what color the eyes are, what shape the clothes should be in. Should the shirt be geometric or should the shirt be a solid? Should the pants be red or black or gray? And so our imagination is that part of our mind that allows us to take a skeletal form of a snapshot image and then build flesh around it. Now, the imagination, now most of the time, uh, there are a couple of things I want to touch on here. One of the first passages, remember the scripture in Matthew where it says, if a man looks upon a woman and lusts after her in his thoughts, now he has never touched this woman. But if he looks upon a woman and lusts after her, then he has already sinned in his heart. Now, why is that so? Because remember, I tell you guys all, all the time, all things are created four times. The first realm of creation is in the thoughts. The first realm of creation is in the imagination. So that you and I are such powerful entities that we literally can construct anything in our thoughts before it ever exists in the natural. Now, one of the things that I have been doing, and I have been doing it with more intentionality, and I'll be honest and tell you, I haven't been doing it as often and as frequently as I should, because I've, I've had a lot. I, in fact, you guys, I've been to court again this week. Uh, I've had, I've had, I had two attorneys at my house. I've had people going through my, it's just been so much and I understand now why the battles that I have lived through in the past few years, I understand that it was one of the enemy's attempts to bring me off focus and to, to stop this kind of teaching, not off my head, but through experience. 
So what I have experienced in this particular realm was the enemy bringing thoughts to my mind, trying to get me to take my focus. Uh, to Now, oh gosh, so much coming through my head. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me focus. Help me get it right. Okay. So when it comes to the imagination and the thoughts, we control the spectrum of thinking. Now, I've never heard anybody teach this like this before, and this is how God gave it to me tonight. Now, everyone has the same degree of focus. Everyone has the same degree, has, has, has very, we all have energy behind our focus. In other words, when I think about something, it's not that I am thinking about something, it's that what am I thinking about and to what level of energy am I applying it to that thing? And there is, so that I said that there is a spectrum. So now, so let's visualize this. My focus is the center, okay? So if you visualize this, visualize a scale. A scale from, let's say this is the, the negative side and this is a positive side. So I'm going to be moving across the scale and then in the center is neutral, okay? Now on that spectrum of thought, I, everyone is on the spectrum. In other words, everyone is thinking about something. Okay? Everybody is thinking about something. Now the question is, what are you thinking and how much energy are you putting behind the thought which determines the level of manifestation behind it? That's why when he said, if a man looks upon a woman and lusts after her. Now, let's talk about lust for a second. Lust is just a form of energy on the negative end of the spectrum. In other words, when a person looks at a woman, looks at something lustfully, they are meditating. They're thinking about what is it going to feel like when I do it? What is it going to feel like when I put my hands on it? What is it going to feel like? I mean, you guys, you I'm, I'm, Y'all been there. You know some of these guys. You know how, how visual men are. They're wired that way. And so when a man looks upon a woman and lusts after her, in other words, when he, when he sends a high degree of mental energy in that direction and he begins to paint the picture of what the experience is going to look like in his mind, he is already in the first realm of creation. And that's where, it, that, without that realm, nothing manifests. Now, he is on the, an end of the spectrum, on, an end of the focus spectrum that's in the negative realm because it's going to lead to sin, okay? So that now, so, so the issue is not should I focus, but how do I shift my focus from the negative realm and bring it back first to neutral, and then get it on the side where I can begin to create things that bring glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How do I go from looking at that man and looking at his biceps and looking at and looking at you know looking at his six pack and go, man, dang, he fine. Oh man, oh, mm. you know, how do I go from that to going, God, I know. You've got someone in this earth that you said that I get to spend the rest of my life with. I am 56 years old and there is somebody that you got for me. I know that. How do I go from, from going, mm, uh -huh, mm, yeah, to God, I know it, to going, Father God, I don't know where he is, but right now in the name of Jesus, I decree, I speak the word of life over him. I say that wherever he is right now, I decree right now that you put a hedge of protection around his heart, that you put a hedge of protection around his soul. Father God, I decree life to his purpose right now. I'm going to pray over the purposes of God over him right now. Lord, you know what he is supposed to be about. And in Jesus' name, I cut off in the spirit realm every attempt of the enemy to sever him from the, to disconnect him from the purposes and the plans of God. You see where on the, you see how the spectrum works? So it's not, it's not that it's not, you can't. So, so what the church has traditionally taught us is that they'll say, stop thinking that. And the issue is the fact that the innermost longing is there means that that emotion has, it has a, it has, it has a yearning for manifestation and satisfaction. And that yearning for manifest, manifestation and satisfaction comes from God. God gives you that. So it's not, should I connect with a man? It is how, when, 
And what way should I do it so that it brings glory to God? You guys see the spectrum? You see how the imagination works? Is this good? I mean, okay, help me out here. Has anybody ever heard this? Because I've never heard anybody teach this this way. So instead of saying to people, oh, you need to cast that thought down. and bring, I say, hold up. And let me ask you, baby. First of all, what's driving you? What, what, what's going on in your heart right now that's got you thinking about this guy? You, this guy is taking up all of your thoughts. Is it the guy or is it what he represents that you desire? Because if it is what he represents that you desire, let's find. So that's the thing that the enemy is using. So if we can figure out the thing that he represents that you desire, let's stop and take a look at the desire. Now, the desire brings us understanding that the desire, desire, every good, mm, da, 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 the desires come. Uh, what's that? What's that scripture? Um. Um, the, the Lord gives us the desires of our heart. Now, if that thing is coming up out of your heart and it is a legitimate desires, the question is you have to ask, Lord, did this come from you? And is it something that you've given me that the enemy is trying to pervert? So now I'm going to pull it from the negative side. I'm going to pull it to center, to the neutral realm, where I can begin to evaluate it and begin to assess what is going on here. What's happening, Father? What's going on? And God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me. So now that's where the scripture comes in to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. Now, now, where did that? So let's look at so what we're talking about is the spectrum of the imagination. And all the faculties of the mind have, have they're on a spectrum. They come, they, be, they, so it's not like, it's not, it's not as if, it's not like you got the bad imagination and the good imagination. It's just, the, it's all the imagination and you're going to be moving along that spectrum from does it glorify God to, 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 the, to, does it not glorify God? Does it glorify God? And how can I bring my imagination into alignment with what God is thinking? And when I do that, it will always give glory to God. And I only do that when I honor the desires of my heart. I can't discount my desires. In other words, I can't say to you, baby, you, oh girl, you need to cast them thoughts down and bind it up. That boy ain't thinking about you. That boy don't. Let's understand what does the young, first of all, what is the longing coming up out of her that truly comes from God? That's the first thing that we need to help her understand. That that thing, that, that longing, that innermost desire for a mate, for, for, some, for a partner in life, for someone. So you need to understand that that comes from, because the word of God says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. You see? And so, the, but now, so, but what the enemy does is the enemy, out, he'll, the enemy will, will pervert or he'll take a desire and any desire that's not brought under the blood, that's not brought under the, that's not brought under the, brought to the cross. The enemy wants to take it and pervert it. And then he wants to get all in your head and make you feel guilty about doing it. And that's another item that's on the spectrum. So now if he got, so now if he, so if you look, so on this first one, you've got a desire. And then the enemy wants to say, well, you get that desire. That ain't a God. Now you get trying to get you to feel guilty. So now you got you got the desire. And so the desire is, okay, do, am I lusting after this guy? And then or how do I go from lusting after him to bring it into neutral to understanding that th there are healthy desires that come from God? And then how do I go from now, Lord, I need to bring this under the blood. And I need you to help me align what your desire for me is so so then you and, and that's where now this is where information comes in to that can shape the imagination so now you've got you know okay lord i know i know i want to be married and i don't know why this I, this must be for somebody because it ain't necessarily this ain't necessarily me you know i mean eventually yeah at one point i will eventually get married again but that's not what i'm after that's not you know that ain't, that ain't what i'm looking for so anyway so we know that that desire to have a partner, to accomplish things with someone in the earth realm, to, to, to tackle life together, to, we need to define 
what are those longings and list them. And so you write them down. So, what, so you say, what do you want? Well, you know what? You know, it's not that I want a man. I miss affection. I miss having, thank you so much, Stephanie. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. I appreciate that. So now I need to understand what are the desires because recognizing the desires and honoring them brings me to the center. So it brings me to that neutral place so that at the neutral place, I can start to bring my mind into alignment and then I can start to use my imagination to create things that are in agreement with what God promises. So I, I said, well, you know what? It's not necessarily him, but you know what, Lord? He, he was really kind to me. He was really kind to me and, and he treated me respectfully. And then all of a sudden, next thing I knew, I had a crush on him. I had a crush on him. I, now, so it wasn't him. It was the kindness and it was the respect that I experienced in his presence. So that's what you're going. So now that brings, that takes my attention off of the person and it puts my attention on something God can help to mold inside of me. Now I can begin to say, okay, Father, I thank you for now beginning to cultivate in me a heart and a mind so that I can receive and give kindness and respect. Now I need to know, I know what I need to start sowing. I need to start cultivating. So now I want to get an understanding of what does it mean? What is, first of all, what does the word say about kindness? What does the word say about respect? What does the word say about a man and how he treats a woman? What is the word with reference to kindness and respect? And what does it say about a woman and how she treats a man with reference? So now I get, so I get that there's a, there's a scripture that says, you know, that a, a woman should respect a man and a man should love a woman. It's somewhere. I, I, I think it's somewhere. If y'all know what it is, y'all pull that up for me. But now I can bring, so that brings me to the center. And so now I can begin to sow those behaviors into my life. I can begin to activate them. I can begin to do them. And now I can begin to get, a, now, I, so I'm not focused on that guy anymore. I'm focused on the actual character qualities that I recognized in him that my soul was drawn and attracted to. So now I got I can reel my soul in, I can reel my imagine I can reel my thoughts in and now I can begin to use my imagination and construct it. And so I can begin to do things like I said, well you know what Lord, I, I decree in Jesus' name, I know that, that that you know that guy, he may not be for me, but I thank you, Father, that I, I just right now I just honor the way he treated me with respect. And Lord, I just thank you that I just pur I purpose in my life to treat people with respect and sow into the lives of others respect and honor and kindness. And Lord, I expect those things in return from my future partner. I will purpose to exhibit those behaviors. And so you, and then you start imagining what it looked like. You know what, Lord? I love the way He opened the door for me. I love. And so. You consciously, and here's what it looks to you consciously. So when you walk past, and see, there are certain things. I, 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 this is stuff that I do. I don't know about y'all, but this is stuff that I do. When a man holds a door open for me, I, I read in a book a long time ago. This is a book I read before I married. I got married the first time. One of the things in that book, it was, it, it was actually one of those books, was How to Get a Man book. It was a, but it was a good book. <laughs> one of the things I never forgot, that a man loves a woman with a smile. And it said that that a smile uh, from a woman to a man communicates approval. And, and that you could even practice it on your son. So one of the things that I did, even when my son was small, whenever I would see him, I, even as an infant, I would make sure that the first thing that he saw from me when he woke up in the morning was a smile and a, and a face of approval. Because I wanted to communicate to him with intentionality that I approve of you and I accept you. So with intentionality, I started releasing that. I would smile. So when a man holds a door open for me and does anything with kindness, I always make it a habit to make eye contact and express gratitude, approval, and thanks. Because that reinforces that behavior. And now, so that, why do I do that? Because that brings it to the center and it creates a paradigm so that I only expect that. So that ultimately when I meet somebody else, that's all I expect. They're going to, they'll do that behavior. Why? Because that's all I expect. Now, that's just one example of how we can move across the spectrum 
there's a negative side, there's a positive side. And focus moves across the top. We can focus in on something on the negative side that can create all kinds of issues for us. We can do that. Um, I mean, I've been going through a court case, and it's been a content. I mean, I've been I've been in this court battle. You guys, I have been in this court battle for going into my third year, and hopefully Monday it will come to a close. But I ask. I remember asking the Lord multiple times throughout the Lord, should I give in and let it go? And God told me no. But at the same time, the Lord would not allow me on that spectrum to have thoughts of bitterness, of anger, of I, would, I was not allowed to be frustrated. He didn't allow me to get pissed off and to throw tantrums. He didn't allow me to have pity parties and feel sorry for myself and say, oh, I just, God, this is just so unfair. He didn't allow it. Why? Because I had to stay in the center of that spectrum. I had to stay in the place so that I can look at any circumstance and say, God, forgive him. He doesn't even know what he's doing. God, have mercy on him. Father God, I still bless him. I decree in Jesus' name, regardless of what he's doing, I thank you that He, you love him as much as you love me. Your hand is on his life as much as it is on my life. My imagination was not allowed to curse him. I couldn't curse him in my thought. Now, now hold up. Let me get. Let me make something clear. It wasn't that I want. I didn't want to. I, there were some times I wanted to just flat out beat the hell out of him. I'm just serious. I'm just telling you guys. Can I be real and tell y'all the truth? There were some days I wanted to just get a stick. I wanted to take a gun and shoot him. I, I, I felt all of those things. I felt all that stuff over here. But a part of recognizing how to you how powerful the imagination is number one i can't let those thoughts linger number two i can't let, so that as you as the thought comes you have to intentionally bring yourself back to the center and say no god i cast that down and look, and then you have to with intentionality move it to the right and say father god i release your blessing i don't know what you have for him in the future but i knew i know that you love him as much as you love me and so in Jesus' name, I decree your blessings over him. I thank you, God, that I honor your hand upon him. I thank you, God, that you're going to work together your will and you're going to bring him into agreement with your plan. I ain't in the picture, but I'm happy to say God's got something good for him too. And the day will come when he will come into the knowledge and the awareness of what that is and he'll step into it full measure and God will get the glory out of his life over there where he is and he'll get the glory out of my life over here where I am. Okay. Now, those are just, those, now those are life circumstances. Now let's talk about, when we say the imagination, let's talk about creative power. Because, um, there were a couple of things. Let me go. Let me go back. There were a couple, in, in that passage in First Chronicles, it instructs the children of Israel to keep the ideas that were presented by God forever in number one, the imaginations; number two, in the thoughts; number three, in the hearts. Notice that progression: the imagination, the thoughts, and third, the hearts. Now, I find that progression really interesting because God had told the children of Israel to keep his ideas forever in their imagination. Now, in your imagination, that's the place where pictures are formed. So now, in order for you to take, to do anything for God, you're going to have to bring the things that he cares about into your, into your imagination, number one. So that's where the image is. So you get a picture and a snapshot of what God wants to accomplish and do through you. Now, for me, my assignment is the Customer Service Academy. So I look at pictures of the of images of the customer service. I have said, I have visualized. You know, we went to see one of the buildings where the customer service, Renelle Adams and I, and she's on here. Hi, Renell. Um, Renelle Adams and I in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We went to see the facility where the interview day is going to be. And it's this huge gymnasium. And um, that's where the students are going to be, and they're going to do their opening presentation. And then that opening presentation, they're going to um, the, the employers are going to come in there, and and so I have visualized what it's going to look like when when um, Senator Ed, I mean not I keep calling him Ed Gainey Senator. I wanted to see him run for a senator, but anyway, 
Representative Ed Ganey, I see him and I see all of those individuals coming in. I visualize it. I picture it. I see the hundred students in that, in that gymnasium. I feel the energy. I see the students applauding. I see them in their, their black pants, their white shirts, their, their solid colored ties. I see the young ladies with their hair done. I see them all tight. I mean, it's awesome. And the energy in the room is like a Primerica convention or a Mary Kay convention. I mean, it's just so, so powerful. Now, why do I visualize that? I see the students. I imagine students coming up to me going, Miss Stella, I got four job offers. I don't know which one to take. Miss Stella, I, 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 see my, I see myself at a table where the partners and the employers going, we've got more, so we, have, we want to hire them all. We want to hire, I, I mean, I visualize employers saying that to me. Why? Because if I can see it in my mind, the fact that I can visualize it in the natural realm means that at some level in the, at some level in the spirit realm, it already exists. Because if a man looks upon a woman and left after her, he's already committed sin. Well, if I look at a thing in the natural and I create it in my mind, I've already made it. You've already made it. So God is saying he wants us to keep things in the imagination. That's where things, images are formed in the thoughts and in the heart. Now, so imagination is where, that's where images and pictures are formed. Next thing was in the thoughts. In your thoughts is where your values, your beliefs, and your opinions are formed. So now God is saying, if I can get it in your heart, if I can get it in your imagination, then I can begin to help shape your values. I can bring you, I can bring the word to you so that now you can say that if this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, I have access, I, now I have access to his thoughts. So I can take the, I can use my imagination to get an image of what Jesus saw when he thought about me. I can think about, I'm, I mean, I'm all that. I mean, God was, he was serious when he was thinking about me because I have so much stuff going through my head. And now I'm like, God, I'm 56. Do I have enough time to do it all? I feel like I've wasted so much time. And Lord's like, no, you ain't wasting this time. He said, I just let you do the stuff before you did that in model form, what you were about to release in full scale. So, imagination, that's where the images are formed. In the thoughts, first Chron in First Chronicles 29, 18, in the thoughts, that's where your values, beliefs, and opinions are formed. And now the last one, in the heart, that's where your passion is formed. So that if God can get these into alignment, if he can get your imagination formed after something, and then if he can get your thoughts formed after something, and then if he can get your heart formed after something, then that means you got, you got pictures about it, and that's what the guy was doing when he was lusting after the girl. His imagination was on it. And then his values is now whatever his values was. If it was just he just wanted to have sex, if he just wanted to be with her, whatever, his imagination was there, his values were there, and his passion. So that passage is about how is how we use imagination on the spectrum. You can start out over here. And thinking about stuff that you have any business, and you don't just you yes you cast that down, but you have to replace those thoughts with something. And so the issue is not brick cast it down and don't think nothing. No, you got to bring it to center and identify what about these ideas, these visions, these images, these thoughts. What about them are already a part of the desires in my heart that God put there legitimately. Because God says if he can get you in your imagination, then he can get it in your thoughts and he can get it in your heart. So he can get you to think about it. And then if he can get you to form your values and opinions around it, and then he can get your passion behind it, he got you. He got you. Is this good? Oh, this is just so good to me. I'm blessed. I don't know about y'all. I'm blessed with my own self. Ah, thank you, Jesus. So now, now one of the questions that Keisha asked last week was, how do we, what are there activities and exercises that we can do so that we can literally begin to exercise our mental faculties? So the first thing that I want you guys to do is I want you to get a piece of paper and you go, I want you to practice that spectrum idea because on this end, you've got the, the um, you've got the negative side and then you've got the positive side. And then your focus is like, if you see a bar focus, you can move the focus bar. You can move it from the left to the center, to the right. Okay. Excuse me, God. I'm sorry about that. 
Yes, I need to blow my nose, but I'll get there in a minute. So you can move it across that spectrum. You can move it, okay? Now, what you think about, you bring about. So that if, you are, if we are meditating on a thing, if we're focusing on a thing, if we're giving it a whole lot of mental energy, everybody's thinking about something. You're, you're, we, you're applying that energy to something. Now, how much energy you're applying, how much focus you're applying, that's, that, that may vary. But everybody is already on the spectrum. And everybody is on the spectrum with varying levels of energy. And that's how you know, when you, how, the way you know how much energy you're applying is you, start look, you look around you and see what's manifesting. I mean, I look around, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at the, even as the pieces of the academy are coming together. I'm seeing it's not coming together as fast as I want, which tells me I need to apply more energy. Now, why haven't I applied more energy in the past? Because I've had all of these other issues that I've been contending with. And that was a part of the enemy strategy against me. And yet, in spite of what has been working against me, the Lord is still allowing me to see results, which tells me that once this other stuff is behind me, I'm, it's like, I feel like a rocket taking off, okay? So, 1 Chronicles 29, 18, the passage instructs the children of Israel to keep the ideas presented forever in the imagination, the thoughts, and the heart. Imagination is where your pictures are formed. Thoughts is where your values, your beliefs, and opinions are formed. And heart is where your passion is formed. And it's important that you understand that when you get those three things in sync, and you bring them from the left of the spectrum and you're able to focus on things on the right side of the spectrum with energy, that's where your creative power is. And if the, the, more, the more defined, the more refined your imaginative thoughts are, the more energy you are bringing to that thing. And, and typically the, the faster it'll manifest, okay? The faster it'll manifest. Okay, now let me see if there's anything else I want to touch on here. Oh, yes, now I'm actually looking in the notes. I'm on page nine, and on page nine, there is a quote. It says, If you can imagine something, that is, if you can see it first inside your head, seeing it, the fact that you can see it becomes proof that you have all the needed potential for doing it. That means everything necessary for you to manifest that thing, for you to create it, for you to bring it into existence. It's here. It's on the earth. It's inside of you. Now, it may be undeveloped. It may, you may have to look for missing ingredients. You may have to look for missing relationships to help you cultivate you, to help you develop you. And once you do those, then you can begin to see more of what you imagine formulating. So it's really important. The fact that you can see it is the starting point for bringing it to pass. Just like the guy who looked on the woman and lust after her. The fact that he can see it in his mind. So this, yes, that is correct. This is why meditation is so powerful. Because what you think about, you bring about. What we focus on with energy, with power, with passion, we create. So now that you can see it, and you can visualize it, the next thing you have to do is create a plan of action to manifest it. If you can see it, that means somewhere it already exists, okay? Now, the rest of this, if you go on through the rest of this exercise, when you get to the end of this particular exercise, um, Keisha asked the question last week, how do we strengthen or cultivate those areas? At the end of this exercise, and that's gonna be on page 12, you're going to see, number one, you can practice the habit of conscious visualization. Now, what is conscious visualization? That's just sitting down sometimes and just thinking, just picturing, picture what do you want. Now, we all do this. You're already doing this. I'm just telling you, you, are all, you and I, we're already doing this, okay? We're already, we're already consciously visualizing 24-7. The issue is, what, where on the spectrum are you visualizing and are you manifesting the things you want? Or are you visualizing the things that we already have? You got to stop visualizing what you already got and you got to start focusing your visualization on the things you want to create. Okay? 
So number one, practice the habit of conscious visualization. That is you picture the promises of what you are praying for being manifested. Just like this sinuses issue. I, you know, I was thinking, I said, well, you know, I guess I thought I had a sausage. I said, well, I guess it's been this X number of days. I need to go to the doctor. And then I thought, I said, well, you know what? Let me just pray. Let me put in this. Well, Holy Spirit, what, what is your strategy for my healing, my healing in this? What do you, what should I do? And then I just started to stop and just kind of picture. I said, well, let me just kind of picture what this feels like. And as I'm thinking about it, the thought came to me, how much water have you had today? And I thought, well, I haven't had any water hardly. Because when you don't feel well, you don't always drink. You don't stay hydrated. So then I started, I said, well, I need to get more fluid in my body. And so what the, what the, what the Spirit of God started to do is started giving me images of things that I needed to do to help my body process so that it could use its own natural defenses more effectively. Now that's a small example. You can use that same example, the same thing when I do when I'm doing the customer service. You can do use that example about family members that you want to see born again. You can visualize and say, Lord, I just see Bobo standing up in church. I see him standing in church with his arms right. God, I just see the tears streaming down. I see the presence of God just washing all over him. Lord, I just see him rejoicing. I see the joy of the Lord all over him. Look, you talk like that often enough and long enough before you know it, you'll be seeing it. Okay? Number two is repent. Now, when I say repent, traditionally when we think of repentance, we think of repentance to mean um, you're going to feel sorry or feel sorrowful for a wrong action. Repentance doesn't necessarily mean that you have done something wrong. Repentance means we must change the way we think about a particular thing. For example, the spectrum example is a shift in thinking for many people because a lot of people think, well, if I think bad, I got to cast that thought down and I rebuke, rebuke, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke these thoughts, I can't, no. You say, Father God, first of all, I thank you for my mental ability to think. I ask you, God, to help me understand what are the desires behind these thoughts that are, that are righteous and that actually came from you. And the enemy is trying to pervert these thoughts. So I ask you, God, first forgive me for that. But God, show me what is right and righteous about what I'm thinking. And then help me pull the good out of it. And then apply the word of God to the good part. So that I can now take that to build a visual image of what you want to do in my life. Okay. So, number three, think with intentionality. Now, this is something that a lot of people just don't do. A lot of people just don't. Spend time thinking. They don't focus. You guys, excuse me. I am so sorry, but I'd rather do that than let my nose run. Okay? Thinking with intentionality. That means we sit down and just think about the things that you want. What do you want? What do you want? What are you believing God for? Make a list. Write it down. Write down the categories of goals. You know, you've got goals for your family. What do you want for your children? Do you want your children to go to college? What kind of school do you want them to be in? What kind of career do you see, do you visualize them entering into? What, kind, what do you want for your spouse? What is their goal? What are your dreams? Okay, what, do you, what kind of house? You've been renting for the last 10 years. What kind of house? You know, I was walking, I went, to, went with a friend of mine in Pittsburgh. We went and looked at a house that they're getting. What, what, do you, what color do you want the walls to be? Which walls do you want to take out? How do you want to decorate the bathroom? Just get a visual image. Think with intentionality. Of what do you want and write it down? Okay? Now, those are just three. There are other things. There are other things that you can do. But if you guys just do those three activities, I'm telling you, things will open up for you. So between now and next week, I want you to go back and read lesson two. I want you to do those three exercises. And then I would also like for you guys to let me know how, as you're doing these exercises across the week, come back and post. Post. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me what's working. If you're not putting this to work, I don't want you in my group. I don't want you on here. I'll take you off. If you ain't doing nothing with this stuff, I'm going to tell you. I'm just playing. Well, no, I'm not playing. I, I really do want a group of people who are bent on applying the word and the lessons that we're presenting to get results. Okay? 
So let's wrap up. Father God, we thank you for tonight's session. We thank you for those who've been on this call tonight. We speak your word over them, that they will hear this word, that they will activate this word, and they will manifest this word. In Jesus' name, I bless them all. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, thank you guys for being on here tonight. I love you, love you, love you. And until next time, do your exercises, do your homework, and uh, you make it a terrific day. Bye-bye.